The topic of today's shir is living with joy, lessons from the Tanya. So we are going to begin by, first of all, discussing the importance of having joy in our lives. We are all aware uh, of that which it says, Ibdu es Hashem simcha, that we have to serve Hashem with joy, and that really being happy and being joyous is the key to overcome many of the challenges in our lives. Many of us, in fact, all of us face challenges, but often what's going to separate those who are able to overcome the challenges and move forward to those that don't is the attitude that we have when we go through our challenges. And the Torah speaks, and particularly in Chassidus, we explain the importance of having simcha, of having joy in our lives. Now, we are going to base this shear on chapter 26, Perek Chavov of the Tanya. And the Alter Rebbe begins to explain like this, that when you have two people that are in combat, one with the other, so the... Uh, normal way of thinking is that whoever is stronger, he is going to be victorious and he will win in the battle against the other person. However, that is not actually necessarily always the case. So for example, you may have a very strong and powerful person fighting with someone who is um, less strong and less powerful. But let's say the person who is powerful and strong has woken up in a bad mood or is not in a good headspace and is bothered and is um, affected by things going on in that person's life. Whereas the weaker person is full of energy, full of focus. What will happen is that even though the stronger person under normal circumstances would win the battle, but under these circumstances, Circumstances, being that uh, being that um, his headspace is somewhere else, and he is distracted by his own personal issues, he will lose the battle. And the truth of the matter is, so it is in all aspects of our life that I may be able to be, and I might be, and I might have strength, and I might have. Uh, the ability to overcome generally troubles and challenges that I have. But if I'm in a bad headspace, if my place is in, and if my headspace is in a negative place, if my heart is in a negative place, I won't be able to succeed. And so the Alter Rebbe begins by saying and telling us that the first achievement of what joy does is it puts us in that headspace it puts us in that ability to overcome that which that which comes our way and the ability to be able to have to serve Hashem with joy is and therefore the extension of that is to live my life with joy needs to begin with having that simcha, that having that joy, that clearing my head, clearing my heart, having a positive attitude, so that I will then be able to overcome the challenges that I face. In fact, for those of you that have a Tanya in front of you, I just want to spend a moment just reading and opening up this shiur with uh, reading a few lines of the Tanya, of the way the Alter Rebbe describes this idea. So for those that have it, it's chapter 26, Perik Chavov, uh, it's on page 64 in the regular print. And he says like this, and I'm just going to read it for a moment. So if you don't have the copy, that's also okay. But I just want to use the uh, original expression of the Alter Rebbe. And he says, The Alter Rebbe says, I want to be able to make and be known a very great rule, a rule in life. Just like 
if you want to be able to be victorious. If you have two people that are wrestling with each other, one of them want to be able to knock down the other. So you have two people wrestling with each other. If one of them is lazy, if one of them is heavy hearted, he will, he will, he will fall and he will, the, the other person will be victorious over him. Even if that person is generally stronger than the other person. But because I'm now in a lazy mode, my head is heavy, I don't have joy in my life, even though in theory I'm a stronger person, but I will lose. And this is exactly the way it is when it comes to being victorious over the Yetzirah, our evil inclination. And now we are going to use this in the spiritual battle, the same way it is in the physical battle, that I may be stronger than my opponent, but if I don't have a good headspace, I'm going to lose. So to the spiritual battle, when I have to battle my demons, my spiritual demons, <clears throat> the, the, my fight with the Yetzahara, with my evil inclination, it will be impossible to beat my Yetzirah if I am lazy or kvedis or if I'm heavy, which comes from if I'm in a depressed state or if I'm heavy or my heart is blocked, I will never be able to win. Person says, oh, my Yetzirah is so, so powerful, it's so strong, it's so difficult for me to overcome my Yetzirah. What's step number one? It's only if I get my energy that comes from joy. So joy is step number one. And that joy opens my heart and purifies my heart. From all types of worries and depressions and, and, and sadnesses in the world. So therefore, this is the first point. We need to understand ourselves and how does the human being work and how does the human psyche work. The first point is our headspace, our heart. Where is our mind? How am I feeling today? If I am feeling in a good mood, if I am feeling joyous, I will be able to overcome anything. If I'm down, if I'm depressed, and I'm not talking about uh, clinical depression where a person needs medication. I'm talking about when a person brings upon themselves bad thoughts or thoughts that are bringing them down, what that does is it brings down our, uh, our immune system. It brings our spiritual immune system. It brings everything down to the point that I cannot function properly. Today, more than ever, we need to function properly. And the way to function properly First and foremost is by living with joy. If we have joy, that is step number one. So now, and then obviously the question then becomes, all right, it's easier said than done. Live with joy. That's all fine and good if in fact things are going well in my life. But we all, but what about if we have challenges that, that question, that joy, that bring cracks to the regular joy that I would normally have. Yeah, if I wake up in the morning and I'm healthy and well and things are doing well and my relationships are good and my parnas is good and my connection to Hashem is good and I feel that I'm achieving what I need to do and things are going well, sure, it's easy to have joy. And it's easy to say under those circumstances, I'm going to do the best that I can and I'm going to, and I'm going to, win and be victorious over all my challenges and problems, especially if I don't have that many of them. But the question becomes in the real world that we all live with today and that we are all in, and that is not so simple. And now we are going to address some of the challenges to joy and what are the answers? How do we respond to those challenges that would normally bring us joy in our life? So he divides, and I would like to talk about a few different ideas that challenge joy and how we can relate and deal with 
how we can relate and deal with it so that we can come back to the joy that we need to have. So let's talk about some of the things that can be, can get in the way for our joy. So there is, let's talk about spiritual challenges to joy. For example, if I feel disconnected to God, if I feel disconnected to my religion, if I, did, if I feel that I'm not being a good enough Jew, so to speak, if I feel that perhaps I've done sins in my life or a virus that are disconnecting me from my soul and from God, and that can bring us to a little bit of perhaps feeling that I'm not worthy or I'm not good and that, uh, and that we can talk ourselves into the fact that I'm not going to be joyous now because of the fact that I'm, I feel disconnected to God through sins that I have done, through um, not achieving uh, what I know I could have achieved in my life, or I'm not achieving what I know I could be achieving or doing what I know I could be doing. So that's one issue that we're going to address. And what's the response to that? The other issue is what about uh, maybe, what about uh, when there are physical things that are getting in the way of my joy, that I'm, I don't have what I need in this physical world to allow me to be and to have what I need to have so that I can be the best person that I can be. For example, if God forbid a person is not healthy and well, if God forbid they don't have the pronosa, they don't have the livelihood, if God forbid they don't have nachas from their children, or they perhaps are even struggling to have children. So how do we deal with living a life of joy if I'm now struggling with the basic needs of a human being, basic needs of a person that would normally throw off a person from being able to live a life of joy? And then after we respond to those two issues, um, I'm also going to share some ideas that will help us to round things off in regards to living our life with joy. So the first thing is, all right, we understand how important joy is because I can only take on the world if I'm in a good mood. And we all know that. We all see people that, and we, and we want to connect to people that, that just attract uh, attract goodness they attract success and very often the why is it that there are certain people attracting success and if you think about it those are often the happy people the people that people want to be around the people the the, the people that uh, others uh, connect with the, the those that are making waves in the world in a positive way um, are often the ones that, and the ones that we want to be connected with are often the ones that are giving across good energy, good power, good strength. And we want a part of that. And we say, oh, I want a piece of that person. I want to connect with that person. And often what's really going on is that you are seeing a powerhouse of joy. You are seeing a powerhouse of positivity. And how many people do we know in our lives that are, that we, we sort of like, uh, we don't really want to be connected so much with them. And often if you think about it and you think, why is it? It's often because those people are negative. Those people, maybe they make me feel bad when I talk to them. Maybe they feel me, may make me feel low. Maybe they make me feel not good enough. Or maybe they themselves just give off negative energy when I talk to them about a new idea, when I talk to them about things happening in my life and I'm not getting that positive vibe back. And, and I sort of like, maybe I, I want to stay away from them or I, I don't want to connect with them as much. And, and, and often we see that, that the people that are filled with life and positivity and energy are the ones that attract. And the people that are negative or the ones that put others down or the ones that I feel that I'm getting put down by even my connection with them or my association with them. So I sort of like stay away. And so we understand how important it is to really have a positive energy uh, in order to, to really succeed in this world. But now I'm going to address what I said before. How do we deal with, how do we deal with the curveballs that come along uh, on, on the way that sort of detract me from being happy? So let's begin 
uh, we're talking about spiritual barriers to joy because spiritual barriers to joy is way happens way more than we actually would imagine because when I wake up or when I live perhaps in a bad mood or I'm, I'm not in a, not in a good place, sometimes that's me talking to myself and being disappointed, being disappointed with not achieving what I know I should be achieving, not doing as well uh, spiritually. So the first thing we need to do and we need to know is as follows. We all know about the concept of teshuva, which is that um, we, and God gives us this opportunity on Yom Kippur every year, that we can cleanse our soul. In fact, we have this idea of teshuva each and every day when we say tafnu and before we go to sleep at night, where we, are, uh, where we, uh, where we can do teshuva and return to Hashem and, and cleanse our soul. And what we need to understand about that is, is that the whole point of teshuva, and whilst the teshuva is, uh, the process of teshuva is feeling bad about the sin that I did, or feeling bad about the way I disappointed myself or disappointed others or disappointed God, we need to know that the ultimate purpose of teshuva, when we do feel bad for the sins that we do, it's not to stay feeling bad. It's to go through that process and then feel good again about ourselves. God wants us to feel good about ourselves. Remember this, God wants us to be joyous at all times. Yes, it's true. Sometimes I have to feel bad about the sins that I do, but that needs to be quarantined to particular times. So for example, yes, when I'm davening and I say in the Amidah and I say, Slach lano avino kichotono, God, forgive me for the sins that I have done. At that moment or in those few moments, one can stop or should stop and actually feel the pain of the sin that I did. And when I say in Kriya Shema at night and before I go to sleep and I think about my day and I think about uh, how, I have, uh, how I've lived my day and I can think about the good things that I did and feel happy about them, but also think about perhaps the things that are in the areas that I failed and I feel a little bit sorry and upset about that. But that should only be those few minutes where I can stop and think about the way I can improve tomorrow and feel sorry and feel bad. But then immediately after that, we must know that God forgives us and that God wants us to be joyous and that God wants us to start another day with joy and wake up in the morning and start again. He doesn't want us to stay in this constant feeling of depression or feeling bad about myself to the point that I won't be able to fun function properly. Because as we said before, if I'm in a negative state of mind, I won't be able to study Torah properly. I won't be able to do mitzvahs properly. I won't be able to deal with others in a positive and joyous way because I'm feeling bad. So therefore, we have to quarantine the time that I feel bad and take it seriously that at the time that I'm saying tshuva and tachnun and at night and maybe on a Thursday night when I think about the week or on, 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 on Yom Kippur, of course, I feel bad about the sins that I have done and I make commitments about how to improve. But those feelings should be specific and exclusive to those times. The rest of the time, I need to live with joy. Why? Because God wants me to be with joy, live with joy. Why? Because I can only be my very best. I can only give to society. I can only give to the world when I'm in a good frame of mind, when I'm positive, when I'm living with joy. And so even afterwards, and uh, the Alter Rebbe in chapter 26 quotes the Psukim to say that ultimately the idea of tshuva is so that afterwards I can live my life with joy. So he, he quotes the Pesach where it says, Ruach nishbar oleg nishbar v'nitka, that, that there are times we're supposed to have a broken heart and we're supposed to feel bad about the sins that we did. But then, tashmiyeni sosen besimcha, after I've gone through that process, I need to feel joyous. So therefore, in regards to spiritual matters, no matter even how, whatever it is that I have done, 
whatever sins I may have done, however I may have disappointed myself, whatever I may have done that, that, uh, that would make my soul feel sad. And, and, that, my, and, I, and that I know that I've, I didn't do what I should have done or I, I did do what I shouldn't have done. Those feelings, those spiritual reasons to, for taking us away from joy should only be for those times. Then the rest of the time I need to be happy. Furthermore, we should not allow ourselves to be flooded with thoughts of sadness for spiritual matters throughout the day. Because throughout the day, when I'm in working, when I'm in business, when I'm dealing with people, you have to be with, you have to do, you have to, you have to live with joy. Even when I'm davening and when I'm doing mitzvahs, you have to do that with joy. So at all times during the day and during the night, other than the times that I'm doing teshuva, I need to be happy. And actually, if you are flooded with feelings of regret or sadness during the day, know that that comes from the Yetzirah. It comes from the evil inclination trying to bring you down, trying to bring us down. Because we need to live with joy. And if I'm thinking while I'm in working in business or whilst I'm dealing with other people, or if someone calls me to, to help them or to be in touch with them, and I'm dealing with family members, and I'm depressed and I'm sad, and I'm bringing that feeling across to them, then I'm not being the best me. I'm not being the best person who I need to be. So therefore, the Tanya here tells us that actually, actually, whilst we may think that these feelings of sadness come from a good spiritual place, it actually doesn't. Because we need to be, if do as Hashem we have to serve God at all times with joy. All right, so that is, in a, in a very quick nutshell, this idea we've explained of how, even when it comes to spiritual matters, we must not allow guilt or we must not allow past misdeeds to affect my day-to-day -day life. Of course, we all know that uh, it's not that we forget the sins that I have done. It's not that I'm denying that, I've, that I need to improve uh, because we do know the chatosi negdi somid that a person should have their sins in front of them. But the point of the chatosi negdi somid, which means that my sins are always in front of me, doesn't mean that they're in front of me in a way that it's going to bring me down and that I'm going to be depressed and I'm going to be sad. What it means is, or one of the interpretations is that it means, is that I should be humble in front of other people and never think that I'm better than anyone else because I have sinned myself. So when I see someone or when I see a situation of people that I feel that, uh, that they've acted inappropriately and they're not doing the right thing, instead of me being the first one to jump up and down and to tell them off and to, uh, and to judge them, I should just stop for a minute and say, it's sort of like uh, people in the glass houses shouldn't throw stones. I, I've done my own share, fair share of sins. I shouldn't be the first one throwing stones on other people. But that idea, and that, and the, that idea is that I need to live my life with humility. I should never be walking around thinking that I'm better than anyone else. I should never be walking around thinking that, uh, that, that I'm good because there should always be a part of me that has humility because of the fact that I know I'm not perfect. And if that's the case, I should never look uh, at other people uh, as, as, as if I'm superior to them. So there's, there's a lot more to discuss uh, on this idea, but um, I'm going to move on because I would like to complete a full, a full um, message today in this shear. And I'm, I'm actually, uh, it's uh, challenging for me because normally I would ask for questions and uh, if anyone has any comments and uh, it would be a little bit more interactive, um, but we're not ready to do that at this point um, today. So let's move on. Although I do see uh, a chat here and I'm wondering if, um, all right. I suppose actually if anyone would like to, um, they could they could comment a um, they could send me a question uh, uh, on the chat 
or any comments to address. Okay, so that's, that refers to, in a nutshell, the spiritual uh, reasons that would, that would perhaps bring me to uh, not having joy. And uh, as we've explained, we need to keep them to particular times and the rest of the times to live a life of joy. Now, what about physical things? What about physical things that stop us from being happy because of challenges, physical challenges that we have in our life? So just one second. Okay, so let's talk about physical challenges. As we said before, we have to live our life with joy, but what about when I've got serious challenges, whether it's parnasa, whether it's my own health, whether it's dealing with physical things that, that don't allow me to be who I really would like to be, who I feel I can be, or I should be. Now, this question is, is, is a very, very difficult one. And, there's, uh, and I don't think one shear can, do, do, um, can do justice to the answer to this question. But I would like to share one idea, one amongst many ideas, of perhaps how we can deal with the struggles the physical struggles in our physical world that gets in the way of our joy. And that is, and we come back to faith. We come back to faith. We believe, and certainly uh, throughout the ages, and uh, Hasidus really uh, talks a lot about this idea, is that we believe that every single thing that happens in our life is bashgoha pratis, which means it happens by divine providence. We don't believe that actually anything happens in our life that is not divinely ordained. Now, that doesn't mean that we understand everything that happens to us in our lives. And... Uh, if we would understand God, we would be God. And if we would, uh, and God doesn't give us and tell us the secrets of his creation. And throughout the generations, beginning by Moshe Rabbeinu himself, he also questioned God about uh, the suffering that the Jewish people were having in his time. And whilst we, at this time, during the time of Golas, the time of exile, we are not privy to all of God's reasons as to why things happen one thing is absolutely clear and that is that we believe that whether we understand it or not god is with us every step of the way god carries us in our lifetime there is a plan for each and every one of us individually now we all have souls that start in heaven before it comes down to our world and our souls are all given individual missions, each and every one of us. And we all have a divine mission to achieve in the 70, 80, 120 years that we are in this world. And that mission differs, differs from person to person. And we are all going to have physical stumbling blocks along the way, which is based on the mission that was given to me. And sometimes, that can be connected with reincarnation of what happened to my, my soul in previous life, in, in, the, in, a, in a previous lifetime, and things that my soul need to go through to come to its perfection. And these are really spiritual matters that we don't really have much access to that information, but we know that it exists. And therefore, why is it that my physical struggles are such, whereas someone else's is something else? And the answer is that each and every one of us have a particular mission that was given to each and every one of us as we come down to our world. And some of those physical things that God gave us are either things that we will have to deal with our whole life. Some of those things, those things will only be there for part of our life. 
Of course, we are told we must pray and we must ask Hashem to help us in difficult times. And the prayers help. And often, when we pray to Hashem and we ask Him to help us, then those physical barriers can be taken away. And that's the power of prayer. And we very much believe in that in, as well. And in fact, we are encouraged to pray because God wants to listen to our prayers. And he wants us to connect with him. And he wants us to pray to him. And he wants us to talk to him like children to a father. And sometimes it's that talking itself and praying and pray, just like children with parents, that parents want their children to ask them for things and not to take things for granted. And when our children act in a good way and they ask us things, we are often happy to give them what they ask us for, but we want that interaction and we want that connection. And sometimes that's the way it is with God. He wants us to pray to him. And when we do with a pure and sincere heart, he helps us and he takes away the trouble that we have. And therefore we must never accept a trouble and say, well, this was divinely um, decreed to me and therefore I'm just going to accept it and not pray. No, no. God gives us things sometimes for the express purpose that he wants us to pray to him so that he can take it away. And then we create and develop that relationship further with him. So therefore praying to Hashem is a very good thing. And then we can thank him when he helps us. So that's one aspect of it. So praying is always important and he wants us to pray. But sometimes we need to go through a particular issue or trouble or challenge for a certain amount of period in our life, whether it's a week, a month, a year, five years or 10 years, however much, however much it is. And then it's in order for us to deal with it, hopefully learn from it, grow from it, become a better person through it. And then afterwards, look back and say, well, I, 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 uh, I grew from that experience and I learned from that challenge. And sometimes, and we don't know, sometimes we have to live our whole life with a particular challenge. But what can help us in living with joy, each and every one of us, is to, you see, when it comes to other people, if I see someone else going through a challenge, of course, my heart must go out to them and I have to pray for them and I wish them all the best and I must sincerely hope that, they will over, that their challenges will be taken away from them and help them as much as possible to alleviate their pain and suffering. But when it comes to me, sometimes, or myself, or my own physical challenges, what can be very comforting is after I pray and I, and, and, and I connect to Hashem, and if I really and truly believe and think about the fact that God is my Father in heaven and that nothing is happening to me randomly, and that whatever it is that I have to experience right now, I need to learn from, I need to grow from, I need to still connect to Hashem and connect to people and connect to my world in the best way that I can. I don't understand why I have to go through what I'm going through, but I will continuously connect to Hashem in the best way that I can and live my life with joy because I am being carried by God. And what we need to try and train ourselves when it comes to physical matters, is to be able to train myself again and again and to realize, this is the, and, and there are many uh, verses that, that uh, talk about this when, uh, when King David was going through his troubles and, uh, and, and when others were going through their troubles. Ezri me'yim Hashem shemaim it's my help comes from God, the creator of heaven and earth. No one can do anything bad to me because God is with me. Everything is de defined and decided by God, whatever is not in my hands. And we have to train ourselves when we pray and when we wake up our eyes, when we open up our eyes in the morning, to be able to spend a few minutes and moments understanding that God is our loving Father and that whatever He puts us through, even though it might be challenging for us, but there's joy in the fact in knowing that I am not alone. There's joy in the fact in knowing that God is with me. And this is something which is extremely powerful and can be extremely beneficial. Now, it's easier said than done. It's not easy when we are actually going through a difficult situation 
to be able to say, well, uh, I'm going to be, a, I'm going to live with joy because God is with me. I'm not saying this is easy, but the teachings of Hasidus tell us that if we think about this and we try, it's at least alleviates a little bit the pain and it can give us perspective in moving forward. It can give us perspective in our day-to-day -day lives. And here I want to share with you uh, a few examples, actually, a few stories where we find this idea in Tanakh. Well, one of the most, uh, one of the people in Tanakh that really suffered a lot was Yosef Atzadik, Joseph. I mean, if we look at his story, it doesn't really get worse than that. His mother dies when he's very young. His brothers alienate themselves from him. They hate him. They ultimately were going to kill him and then sell him. He ends up in uh, Mitzrayim, in Egypt. And uh, even there, he tries to start a life for himself, but then has all these challenges and uh, actually uh, refuses the advances of, of the wife of Potiphar, who was the wife of his master. And because of that, gets sent into jail for many, many years. A normal person under those circumstances would feel completely abandoned, would feel completely depressed, would feel completely angry, angry at God for allowing these things to happen to him, angry at his brothers, angry at just everything, that he tried to be a good person and everything was going not his way, everything was going against him. And yet we find time and time again that Yosef keeps a positive attitude. And he is constantly saying and constantly um, with the mindset that God is with me even here and that there's a plan for me and that I'm going to stay positive under the most difficult circumstances. And even as he is in jail, and I'm not going into the whole story because I'm assuming that, every, that we all know the story, but even when he is in jail, he is positive, he's, he's talking to his fellow inmates, he's uplifting them, he's, he's brightening their day, he is, he is is a star, even when he is, his wings are clipped, even when he is completely, in a way, has no hope for the future, completely abandoned by everybody, forgotten by humanity, and easily he could think, I'm forgotten by God. And how could God allow these terrible things to happen to me? And yet we find that throughout the years of his difficulties, he is staying positive, he, is, he keeps his faith, he keeps his belief. And even when, years later, the brothers come, those very brothers that sold him, abandoned him, ignored his cries for mercy and help. But when they come to Egypt needing his help, there were uh, amazing courses of event that took place, strings of event that took place. And he ended up becoming second to Paroi by, by explaining the dreams, as we all know. And even then, you would think that now's his time for revenge. Now's his time to let out his anger against God, to let out his anger against those who betrayed him. And yet, he looks back and he says, I have no anger in my heart. I have no upset in my heart. I understand and I have felt this all the way that God is with me, God had a plan for me. I wasn't sure whether, whether I would ever see it, but I always believed it. And then when the moment came, he was a man with a full heart. He was a man that had no revenge, had no anger or upset, and was able to give back love and peace and goodness to everybody, even when he rose to the highest ranks of world power. From being in a place where he could have so easily have let out his frustration and anger, and yet he didn't. And what a tremendous, and we have seen great people even in our times, that when they have gone from jail to greatness, yet didn't allow the hatred to be expressed, didn't allow the opportunity for revenge, and brought peace and were people of love. And those were the great men of today's generation 
but also throughout history. And in a way, we can all be that person. In a way, we can all live like that. Because if I live my life thinking that I fully and completely trust in Hashem, that the events that are not in my hands are orchestrated by God, that ultimately whatever happens to me was meant to happen to me. And I need to learn and grow and just live with the experiences, but know that God is lovingly holding me. And that is not easy. I am not saying this is easy. I'm not saying that this is something which comes to a person naturally. I'm saying that we can focus our mind. We have the power of faith in our heart. We have the power of faith in our soul. That if we access that faith, if we access that emunah, we will be able to live more joyous, more peaceful lives. We can do it. We need to work on it every day. And we may not always succeed. And it may be challenging and difficult, but we can do it. The alternative is to live with bitterness, anger, being angry at the world, being upset at why did things happen to me? Why am I going through what I'm going through? And that is a natural response. But what Hasidus tries to teach us is that try, let us try and elevate ourselves beyond that. Let us try and find a way to find joy even as we are experiencing negativity by knowing that ultimately Hashem is with us and he is our loving father. And if I wake up every day and I think every moment that I'm going to face the day and I know God is with me and I know God is holding me and I know that there's a plan for me and I'm going to be the best that I can be even under trying circumstances, then we will live a much more joyous and happy life. I just want to share and uh, I know someone uh, who was going through a challenging time in Parnassa was he was uh, he was trying to support his family and he had lost his job and he was really concerned about how what does his future hold and this was going back in the late 1980s and this is a story that happened with, uh, with the Rebbe. And uh, his son went to the Rebbe and the Rebbe used to give out dollars on a Sunday. People would have the opportunity to get a blessing and to ask for advice. And I know this person uh, personally. And he, um, his father asked him to go to the Rebbe for him and ask a blessing because he's very worried about his pronosis, worried about his livelihood. He doesn't know what to do. And this person didn't live in New York, so he asked his, lived in Eretz Israel, and he asked his son who was living in New York to ask the Rebbe a blessing for him. And uh, he tells the Rebbe in Yiddish uh, that my father's very worried about Parnassa. And the Rebbe looked at him and said, worried? In Yiddish. Worry, worrying only makes things worse. We have to stop worrying, have more faith, and Hashem will help. And indeed, the message was sent to this man, worry less, have more faith, and Hashem will help. Worrying only makes things worse. And indeed, things got better for that person. And I want to say to all of us, it's natural to worry. It's the thing that comes to us when challenges come our way. What we need to know is, and what we need to work on ourselves, worry less, have more faith. Worrying only makes things worse. Worrying puts, our, puts ourselves in a state of nervousness, of anxiety. How, how efficient can I be when I'm in a state of anxiety? How beneficial can I be to my family, to those around me, if I'm in a state of anxiety and nervousness and worry? The answer, not very efficient at all, not very beneficial. But if I can put aside the worry 
and focus on having faith. Faith in God. That's real for us. Faith in God is real. Hashem li loy ira. God is with me, I shall not fear. That's such a powerful statement. God is with me, I shall not fear. God is with me, I shall not fear. Imagine if I woke up in the morning or I spent a moment when I'm davening and I think to myself, God is with me, I shall not fear. It's very powerful. It's extremely comforting. It's extremely, it can be life changing. When I allow myself to access the peace in my soul, knowing that God is with me. And I want to share another story because this idea of serving God with joy has really been the backbone of Hasidic teachings for hundreds of years. And, and I, would, I would even venture so far to say that the whole Hasidus, really, our whole Hasidic philosophy is based around this point of being joyous. And why? Because God is with me. God is with our world. He does not abandon our world. He doesn't abandon any of us, no matter how dire or difficult things seem to be, or indeed that they are. I'll share with you another story. It's uh, also some, a story that I know firsthand. So I, I know someone also that was going through a very difficult situation, uh, a financial situation. Again, it came down to finances. And, so many of our problems today are financial, the, 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 the worry and the anxiety, and, and indeed today, as actually as we speak with uh, everything that's happening at the moment, people concerned about their jobs, their future, their parnosa, where's it going to come from, how's, it gonna, how, how's this all going to work out? Uh, I don't know the answers, but I will say this, and I'll, I'll share with you a story. And perhaps this can be the main takeout of today's share. So I know someone that uh, personally also that uh, was going through a very difficult financial, difficult situation. And the person personally uh, was, um, went by the Rebbe and he also again by dollars and told the Rebbe that I'm going through a very difficult time and I'm in great financial stress and I just don't know what to do. And uh, the Rebbe said to him, first and foremost, don't be depressed. Be happy. Be happy. Don't be depressed. Okay. That was what the Rebbe told him, so he tried to do what he could. In fact, uh, that person's wife went by the Rebbe that day as well and said, my husband, uh, the Rebbe actually said to her, to her, I've told your husband to be happy and try and encourage him to be happy because that's how the blessings will come. Get rid of the Morish Chayra, the, the, the black mood, and uh, work on being a Mora Labena, the white mood, the happy mood. And that's what the Rebbe told her and him, both of them, the couple. And then several months later, when things improved, and the Rebbe was informed, the Rebbe said, this is because you have, you were listening and you were being happy like I asked you to be and you threw away your negativity. Basically saying that the blessing actually comes when we are positive. We open the channels of blessings in our lives and to our soul when we are happy. So it's not just that it's important to be happy to, 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 because we want to be more productive in the world and we want to achieve more. But actually, the blessings themselves come down to us. We open what we call the tsinoris, the channels of blessings, when we are happy. And being sad or being depressed or being negative actually blocks the pipes of energy and blessing that come from heaven. 
Joy is the opening for everything. For everything. Joy is what allows and brings the blessings. Sadness, anxiety, and worry actually close everything up and doesn't allow the blessings to come through. And so I would like to conclude by blessing each and every one of us to try every day we wake up in the morning and the very first words, it's in the sitter, and I would ask everyone to perhaps, especially during these times, to, there's a prayer called the Maida Ani Lefanecha, which is the very first sentence we're supposed to say when we wake up our eyes, when we, wake, when, we, when we open up our eyes in the morning, even before we get out of bed, and it doesn't have God's name, so we can say it before we wash our hands. Maida Ani Lefanecha, Melechai V'Kayom, I thank you, Hashem, God, that you return my soul to me. And if we, will, if we started our day every, every day saying, thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem, for being with me. Thank you, Hashem, for believing in me. Thank you, Hashem, for giving me the ability to believe in you. Thank you, Hashem, for what I have. Thank you, Hashem, for the life that you've given me. Thank you, Hashem, for the blessings in my life. And God, give me the strength to be able to go through the challenges knowing who I am. Whatever is meant to be with you and challenges is meant to stay by my side, me to strive to have faith and to have joy and to focus on the joy. Because we don't always have an option of what happens or doesn't happen to us, but the option of how we respond to that and how we think the power of our mind is so powerful. It is so powerful. It's everything. Everything is the power of my mind. Everything in my life is the power of my mind. And so let us try, let us try to incorporate some of those ideas that we've been speaking about today. Let us know that we can overcome, like if we have the joy, it gives us strength, it gives us power. Let us focus on our positivity. We'll put aside the negative feelings about ourselves to times of teshuvah. But at all other times when we are serving Hashem, when we are living our day-to-day -day lives, let us be joyous. Let us open the channels, particularly in today's day and age. Whilst we are uncertain of exactly how this is all going to pan out. But let us be certain of this, that God is with us. That God is carrying each and every one of us. That God is a partner with us. And he understands that we need to bring Parnassah to our families. He understands that what we need to live our lives and he will help us through in the way that he knows that we need. Let us continue to pray to him, strengthen that relationship. When we pray to him, he will answer. And he will answer again and just take comfort and Try and be positive. That's the basis of all things to us. I bless each and every one of us and each and every one of you with power, with strength. Let us be ambassadors of who we come in touch with, whoever we come in contact with. Let us say a good word. Let us be encouraging. Let us never be prophets of doom. We know what's out there. But by our positive words, by our positive energy, by our positivity of uplifting others, the world needs upliftment right now. The world needs positive energy right now. The world needs each and every one of us to bring light around us and to the world. That is the one message we need to emphasize again and again and again. And just like it was as we are approaching Rosh Chodesh Nissan, we're approaching Pesach. 
that in the days of old, that ultimately God took us out of Egypt, ultimately he took us to Sinai, he split the sea, he took us to Eretz Israel. It will happen again soon. Let's hang in there. Let's be positive. Let us have faith that there's a plan, that God has a plan, and that we will see, please God, very soon, the positive outcome. We will see redemption in our world. We will see healing in our world. We will see the hand of God as he helps humanity, as he helps all of us. And please God, may we merit to see that redemption, to feel that redemption. We will see it in our lifetime. We will see it soon. Let us be prepared with a smile, with joy, to do what we can to bring extra light until the day comes when the world will be filled with joy and singing and gladness and happiness. Is God with the coming of Mashiach in our times. Next year in Yerushalayim. And please God, this year in Yerushalayim. So that already by the Pesach Seder, not only we won't need to have social distancing, but all of us, all of Am Yisrael, all of us will be in Yerushalayim together.